What's up, YouTube? My name is Clickwood, and I am back again today bringing you guys another fantasy football preview video here in the coming days before the NFL season. And I know, guys, a lot of you are asking me, okay, I get it. You have the top 10 running backs here, but what about sleepers? What about guys who are maybe going later in drafts or potentially even going undrafted in some leagues who I could add to my roster at the end of my draft and get some value out of or potentially have a guy who could be a big star down the road. Well, guys, that's what we're going to be focused on today, and we are talking about the running back position. So I'm going to be giving you guys five sleepers today that I like going into the 2014 season. They're all on different teams, but they're guys who could contribute if the right circumstances happen. So with that being said, let's start off with number five. And at number five, we have a guy named Jonathan Grimes of the Houston Texans. Now, his positional average draft position right now on ESPN is 76. So what that means is that he is the 76th running back going off the board on average in ESPN leagues. Now, of course, that kind of takes into consideration the fact that he's going undrafted in a lot of leagues. So he might be, let's say, the 40th running back drafted in some leagues, but then he's undrafted in other leagues, so it kind of averages out to about 76. And basically, guys, that means that he is a very late round pick in most leagues. You kind of have to judge your own league based on when you should draft a guy like Jonathan Grimes or even if you should draft a guy like Jonathan Grimes because I think that he's the kind of guy who he could be someone that you end up putting into your lineup, but really only if... Arian Foster, the starting running back in Houston, gets injured. Um, this isn't going to be a situation where it was like Ben Tate, where Arian Foster and Ben Tate were both very productive for a while. It's not going to be like that. I mean, this is the Arian Foster show as far as we know. Now, there could be a situation where Arian gets hurt or if he's being extremely unproductive where Jonathan Grimes does end up getting some time, but I don't see that happening, and, and if it does happen, it probably means that Houston is playing absolutely atrociously. It probably means the, that the quarterback situation is worse than we expected. Maybe the offensive line situation is worse than we expected, but overall, I actually really like the situation that Jonathan Grimes could find himself in should Arian Foster miss time like he did last year. Arian Foster actually did miss eight games. Now, Ben Tate stepped in and he performed decently while he was healthy, but at the end of the season, Ben Tate actually went on the IR with broken ribs. And what happened was that Houston turned to Jonathan Grimes in week 17. Now, Grimes did rush for 50 yards, and he also had six receptions for 76 yards. So that lets us know that at least in this Houston offense, or what was the Houston offense anyway, uh, he did get used as more than just a guy who was just taking the ball out of the backfield. He was also catching passes, and that's always a good thing to see for PPR's sake. And it's also a good thing because that's kind of what Arian Foster's role is. He's a guy that does more than just carry the ball. He's also a guy who can catch passes. So we like to see that Jonathan Grimes has at least somewhat of a similar skill set to Foster. Now, I don't think the talent is quite there. Um, he was undrafted coming out of college in 2012, and he's actually been on the Texans roster three different times. He was picked up by them immediately out of free agency after the 2012 draft. And then uh, he played with them for a short period of time before getting cut. Uh, then he went over to the Jets and spent a little bit of time with them before he got cut from that team as well. Went over to Jacksonville, again cut. Ended up in Houston, and like I said, at the end of the year, um, he was running the ball as the team's lead back at the end of the season. Now, they were obviously a horrible team. They were vying for the worst record in the NFL, but still, he was productive. He had 126 total yards. Uh, that is not bad by any means. We will definitely take that from a fantasy standpoint on a terrible team. Uh, I do think that Houston is going to be a step better this year, and if Jonathan Grimes were to take over as the starting running back there, he could have some immediate value for you. We don't know what the situation is with Arian Foster and his health. He, he claims that he's perfectly fine, but you never really know at this point in time. Uh, everybody says that they're fine coming into the season. What we really want to see is how he performs forms as soon as the season begins and if he does look like he's not up to full health then potentially there could be a situation where Jonathan Grimes does take over as this team's lead back so with that being said guys let's move on now to number four 
And here we have a guy who is also very young, but talented as well. And that is Andre Williams of the New York Giants. Now, I really do think that Andre Williams is one of the best values for late in your fantasy football draft. And the reason for it is because I'm not a firm believer in Rashad Jennings. Rashad Jennings is a guy who came from Jacksonville. He was primarily Mary Jones Drew's backup there. And yes, he had some games from time to time where he performed, but I think that was more of a situation of just opportunity than it was skill. Skill. I mean, obviously, when you're getting the chance when Maurice Jones-Drew gets injured and you have the chance to be the starting running back on a team, you're going to get at least enough carries to be relevant for fantasy football. And that's about all that Rashad Jennings was. He was never spectacular. He never put up the games that would win you fantasy football uh, games from week to week. So I just don't really think that I believe much in him. Now, obviously, he's in a much better situation here in New York than he was in Jacksonville. But I just believe that... There is a, a little bit too much hype happening for Rashad Jennings. I think that Jennings is the kind of guy who I would be drafting more around like the 8th, ninth round of fantasy football drafts, but he's going in the 5th in most leagues. That is way too high for me. In contrast, I really like Andre Williams, who's going undrafted in most leagues. He's the 53rd running back off the board in, mo in your average ESPN league, and I think that the value is absolutely there. Now, Williams is, I think, like I said, I think that he's the kind of guy that has the potential skills-wise to be pretty decent in the NFL. Now, Tom Coughlin can be tough on rookies. He can be the kind of guy who's a hard ass and doesn't want him to, you know, get out there and, and do anything because they're they're still learning this offense and, and we can't trust him yet. But I think that the running back position is one of those where if Tom Coughlin's going to trust somebody, it's going to be at a position like running back, which is probably the easiest to transition for in an NFL offense from college to the NFL. And I'm not saying it's easy, but easiest of all the other positions, quarterback, offensive line, tight end, wide receivers have to learn a lot more than your running back does, which is just basically find the hole in the offensive line that they open up for you and run through it. There's not a whole lot other than that, other than pass protection, which is something that I think everybody needs to work on. Rashad Jennings isn't a rock star in, in pass protection either, so um, I think that there's a lot closer competition here than people are making it out to be. Now, Andre Williams isn't somebody that you're going to get contributions from early in the season, I don't think. I, I believe that Rashad Jennings is going to be given the opportunity early in the year, maybe for the first three, four weeks. But if he drops the ball, if he fumbles, if he doesn't look good, if he's struggling in pass protection, all those type of things, pay attention to that because Andre Williams is the kind of guy who can step in and potentially perform. So I do like the opportunity here. I love the fact that you basically have to risk nothing to get him. And at, at the number four position here on my running back sleepers list, I really do think he's a great value. Next on the list, we have Jeremy Hill of the Cincinnati Bengals, who is like Andre Williams set as the RB2 for his team going into the season. Now, he is also a rookie like Andre Williams, but I think his situation is even better because unlike Andre Williams, it looks like he might be somebody who gets carries right off the bat. Now, obviously, Cincinnati has Giovanni Bernard, and Bernard performed very well last year, but he was performing in a complementary role to Ben Jarvis Greenellis. A lot of people forget about that. Yes, Giovanni Bernard was the highest scoring fantasy player on the team from the running back position. However, it was Ben Jarvis Green Ellis who was the guy who touched the ball the most as far as running the ball. So I think that that's something that we really need to think about. Ben Jarvis Green Ellis has looked not good. He was terrible last year in terms of yards per carry. And that's, I think, why Cincinnati drafted Jeremy Hill. I believe that they want Jeremy Hill to take that role from Ben Jarvis Green Ellis. And I think he's done so as far as what he's done in the preseason. I do expect him to be considered the RB2 to start the season and have Green Ellis be the depth guy, the guy who is the veteran and uh, can teach these guys that kind of BS, you know, that, that all the uh, NFL stories like to talk about. But the reality is that Jeremy Hill is a very talented back and the Bengals used a high round pick on him. It wasn't a first round pick. I, I, if I remember correctly, it was either a second or a third round pick. And I apologize for not knowing that off the top of my head, but uh, he was a high round pick for this team, which goes to show you that they believe that they need somebody to compliment Giovanni Bernard. Now, I'm not saying that I don't like Gio Bernard. I really do. I, and, he, and he actually made my top 10 list for PPR uh, running backs. 
But I love where Jeremy Hill is being drafted because he's currently going off the board as the 49th running back taken. And that is tremendous value from somebody who could, could touch the ball 150 to 200 times this year very realistically. And if Giovanni Bernard goes down for whatever reason, Jeremy Hill could be a top 10 running back. I really do believe that. The guy has skills, and he's in an offense that is going to move the football. I expect Cincinnati to run the ball as much as almost any team in the league this year, and that means you could be seeing 350 to 400 carries out of these two. And with that being said, guys, that is an awesome value for Jeremy Hill. He, Like I said, as, as your, uh, maybe your RB4 or something like that, I think that he has great upside that you're not going to find out of a lot of guys that are going around where he's drafted. Now, if you're in an expert league or if you're in a league where people kind of know what they're doing a little bit more, you might have to take a more of a chance on Jeremy Hill. Whereas if you're in a league with your family members or you know a bunch of friends who are first getting into fantasy football and not a lot of people know what's going on, you might be able to wait till the very end of your draft to draft Jeremy Hill. And that's kind of what I would recommend. Take him right before you take your, your your kicker in your defense, basically, uh, at the end of your draft. And yes, you heard me. At the end of your draft, you draft your kicker in your defense. Don't draft them in the sixth round, guys, like somebody did in a league that I'm in the other day. I, I had to just drop my head and shake it because you can be drafting guys uh, who are still starters for your fantasy team in the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth rounds. Don't be that guy. Wait on a guy like Jeremy Hill. Draft him in the third to final round, fourth to final round if you're if you're in a, a lesser experienced league. And if you're in a more expert league, then you're probably not paying too much of attention to what I'm saying on fantasy football. You've probably got your own opinions. But Jeremy Hill, I think, is a guy that you need to target still in those type of leagues. Next on the list, we have San Diego Chargers running back Danny Woodhead. And Danny Woodhead is a guy who tore it up this past season, at least in PPR leagues. He was an absolute monster. This guy was one of the top receiving backs in the league. He tore apart my Dallas Cowboys one week, I remember very specifically, but Danny Woodhead was still the backup running back for Ryan Matthews. He was the RB2. He didn't touch the ball as much as Matthews, and I don't expect him to again this year, but he was still a borderline top 10 running back for a good chunk of the season if you were looking at the PPR leagues. So I definitely like Danny Woodhead. Uh, he's currently going off the board as the 37th running back. Now they have a new offense there that might not throw the ball to the running back quite as much, but even if Woodhead catches 55 passes as opposed to 75 receptions, Man, he is still a great value here as the 37th running back off the board. That means he's going to be an RB3 in a 12-team league or potentially even an RB4. And I, I don't believe that you're going to find much more value than that out of a guy who's going to touch the ball every single week. He'll probably catch four to five passes in almost every game. And that is the kind of value that you really like to see because if he gets 50 yards and five receptions or, you know, 60 yards off four receptions, or if he somehow sneaks into the end zone on a run or a reception, he's going to put up 10 to 15 points a week. And out of your RB3 or your flex spot, that is tremendous value. I really do think Danny Woodhead's somebody that everybody should be looking at. Do not sleep on him. Last on the list, we have one of my favorite sleepers from last year, who was making me look like a genius before he got hurt, and that is Shane Vereen. Now, Shane Vereen is the kind of guy who could potentially lead the New England Patriots in receptions this season. We haven't really seen much out of the running backs in New England this year. Everybody's kind of looking bad. Steven Ridley looks bad. James White doesn't look great. Um, the other guys that they have there really haven't been exceptional in the preseason. There have been a couple moments where they've looked good here and there. But the guy that's looked the best by far is Shane Vereen. Now, I'm not expecting that Shane Vereen is going to step in and be the starting running back in New England. I don't expect him to carry the ball 300 times this year. But if he gets 150 carries and he catches the ball 80 times, like I think that he has the potential to do, he could be a top 10 fantasy running back this season. He has that kind of upside. Last season would be when you take into account the amount of games that he missed and the amount of receptions that he made, he was, I guess you could say, on pace for 94 receptions. 94. That would have sh just destroyed everybody else. I believe that the highest reception total out of anybody else was uh, Pierre Thomas out of all the other running backs, and I think he had 77. 
So, I mean, seriously, Shane Vereen was on a crazy pace, 94 catches. That would have been the highest number that we've seen out of a running back in a long, long time. And because of that, Vereen has the kind of upside that you can take here at the 29th running back position. That's where he's being drafted on average right now. Uh, Late in draft, seriously, guys, late, late, late um, for 29th running back off the board. I, I just, I'm astonished. I don't believe that he has much downside in that kind of a scenario. If you draft him as the 29th running back off the board, he's pretty much going to be a a low-end RB2 or a flex. And with that, he is a tremendous, tremendous value. I really do like him. I'm targeting Shane Vereen in basically every single one of my PPR leagues. In non-PPR leagues, I don't like him as much, but he is still an absolute beast and somebody that could contribute for you even in non-PPR leagues. So with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope this was helpful. I know the running back's position is the one that people are always really looking for the sleepers in, so that's why I did that one first. I hope this helps you guys out. If it did, make sure you press that like button below and leave a comment below as well. Let me know what kind of running backs you guys like here at the end of drafts. Uh, Again, this is basically ranked in the the order of where they're being drafted, so it's not necessarily the value that I like out of them or anything, but... Um, it's, you know, the, you can see the positional ADP and then I rank them based on, um, you know, where I think that they're going to go. So again, Danny Woodhead might be a better value at 37 than Shane Vereen is at 29, for example, but don't, don't get too, too lost in the order that they're in other than knowing that you're going to have to draft the top guy first and the bottom guy last. Hope that makes sense for you guys. Sorry, I didn't explain that at the beginning. But with that being said, I hope you guys, like I said, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I hope that the next videos, that you guys will enjoy those as well. They should be out here. We'll have the wide receivers, the quarterbacks, and possibly I'll do a tight end one as well. Uh, Might mix that in with one of the other ones, depending on the situation. But uh, with that being said, guys, like I said, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And I will talk to you beautiful bitches again soon.